Yes. That's on. I have been looking forward to this day for so long. It's the first proper warm, sunny day of spring and the carp are bound to be up on the surface cruising around in this warm weather. Today's video is going to be all about surface fishing. I'm going to run through my tactics, my approach and uh, hopefully have a really good day out here. There are carp cruising along all over the place. Let's get set up. There's actually one or two fish cruising around in the reeds in front of us. And what this means is I don't need to put a float on the line or any weight. I don't need to cast very far at all. So I'm going to set up a free lining rig. It's very complicated. I'm going to have to try and explain this to you so that you guys can understand. Essentially what you do is you tie a hook on the end of some line. And that is why I love free lining so much. It's so simple. You literally need a packet of hooks and your rod, of course and um, yeah, hook on a little bit of bread or something. I'm gonna try that first. Whilst I uh, set my rod up and um, tie my hook on, because it's obviously gonna take so long, uh, I'm gonna just put some bait in. I wanna see if they react, like how they react to the food. I've just got some dog biscuits here, and that is a great cheap bait to use when you're surface fishing. The chum mixers are the one. They float for ages and perfect size and easy, easy to catapult. Are they gonna start feeding? That's the question. I'll give them a minute, I'll get my rod set up and, uh, and then we'll try and catch one. Which one's gonna take it? The bigger one. Yes. Yes, no, yes. <laughs> wow, they are spooky. There we go. Ah, it struck out of him. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, that's a good one as well. I'm done. <laughs> I'm not done. I need to catch one. How did he get away with that? In hindsight, I was striking too early. It's easy to get excited and not wait long enough before setting the hook. I'm always like this early on in the season. However, once I've calmed down a little, I'll wait a second after the bait has been taken before striking. Here we go. Yes. That's on. <laughs> that was the biggest fish in that whole shoal. And he's only gone and taken it. Whoa. He's scrapping. This one's woken up. There was loads of two pounders down there, teeny little things. So I was quite excited when this one uh, came into the swim. With the polarizing glasses as well, you can really cut out the glare and actually see the fish properly before you catch them. There we have it, first bite of the day. Well, actually I had a couple of bites which I completely missed. Struck way too early, but this one got hooked. And this is a solid reminder of why surface fishing is just my favourite way to catch carp. So exciting, so enjoyable. Uh, not many better ways to spend a beautiful sunny spring morning or afternoon. I don't know what time it is. Anyway, there's time to catch more carp. After I caught that fish from the reeds just in front of me, it definitely seemed to scare off the others. The shoal just kind of stopped taking. And I started to see more fish moving along that far margin. And there's actually, now that maybe it's because the sun's hitting the water, but there's quite a few fish out in the middle, but further from the bank. 
Now freelining is a great tactic, as I said before, I love it, but you can't do it at long range. You've only got the weight of a piece of bread, you know, and you're never gonna be able to cast that long distances. Now this is where a interceptor controller float comes into play. This gives you the weight to cast further into the lake, but also creates some resistance. So the fish takes the bait, it starts swimming off, pulls the hook link tight, and you seem to hook the fish like quite often without even having to strike. Sometimes I'll have the float out in the lake and uh, I'll be laying the rod on the ground, catapulting out some more bait and it'll erupt, the fish will be hooked. So using a float like this not only helps you hook fish at long range when you can't see your hook bait, but also helps you get the weight to cast that sort of distance. So I've set up a very simple surface fishing rig. My hook bait is a pop-up. I've trimmed that down to be a little bit smaller. So it looks kind of similar to a dog biscuit. Uh, sometimes you can actually use a white pop-up and that will get you a quicker bite. But most of the time, especially if the fish are quite spooky, uh, a trimmed down brown pop-up that looks like your dog biscuits is a really, really good hook bait. You need to trim it down a little and balance it in the margins so that it sits quite low in the water. If your hook bait is too buoyant, the fish actually struggle to suck it down. Next to that pop-up, I've got a size 12 hook. When I'm fishing on the surface, I tend to find quite a small hook is a really good, uh, good move because something because the fish are looking up, they can see it easily or they feel it, but I've fished with big hooks on the surface before. Uh, and often just not really done very well. The fish spook off of the hook bait far more than they actually take it. So behind my small hook is a short hair rig with my pop-up mounted on that. The hook link I think is seven pound, uh, low diameter sort of match fishing line. I like to use a very thin monofilament hook link uh, as the fish can't see it so easily. It sits up on the surface and floats well. On the opposite end of the hook link is a swivel, the swivel that comes supplied with the uh, controller float. The other side of the swivel is attached to my main line so once I've threaded the line through the uh, float tie it off to the swivel and then pull it down inside. It sort of locks in place, uh, pulls in firmly enough so that if a fish takes your bait it gets hooked against the weight of the float but should you snap up or uh, lose a fish then it can uh, you know it can get pulled out it's, so it's a safe rig. On the main line I actually like to get a little bit of Vaseline and spread it along the line. Vaseline, I think it's, well, it's, it's, a, it's an oil and oils tend to sit on the surface of the water. So what that helps the line do is float much better. The worst thing that you can have with a rig like this is have your line sinking down beneath the surface because what that ends up with is your hook bait ending up sitting next to your float like that. What you want is the line floating right up on the surface, keeping your hook bait nice and far away from the float. If you're having tr trouble controlling the float and your, line, your main line's sinking, you can also take a bit of Vaseline and f uh, spread that up your main line as well, just to make sure it doesn't start sinking. Anyway, that's ready to go now. There's one or two fish cruising around out there. I need to introduce a little bit more bait before I cast in. I tend to find the best way uh, to have success when you're surface fishing is not to cast in too quickly. That's quite challenging to do, as I'm always tempted to, you know, cast straight in and try and catch a fish as quick as possible. But if you do that, you often scare them off too soon. So a few dog biscuits in the catapult, get those fish feeding before you cast out. And once they're really going for it, then I can cast into the middle of it and hopefully get a quick bite. I did get a quick bite and another two or three after that. Conditions were perfect and the fishing was good. Thankfully today we've not really got very much wind. However, on a more breezy day, you can sometimes get that little ripple on the surface, which makes it very hard to see your float or your bait. And actually I find when it's kind of choppy, the fish don't tend to take off the surface very much. So, a little bit of oil. This can be sunflower oil, olive oil, basically any type of oil. Uh, you can get fishing ones that are full of extra 
scents and flavors and stuff as well. But yeah, you tip oil over your dog biscuits, then you introduce them to the water and somehow that oil kind of seeps off the dog biscuits and there's some science to do with water tension. But essentially, it, if it's only a little ripple, it will get rid of it completely and flatten off the water, making surface fishing a lot easier. Now, one thing about introducing dog biscuits into the water is that today, I've thrown some down here, I've catapulted some out there, uh, and that works fine. However, if you need to go at longer ranges, past catapult distance, then you've got to use a spawn. Just take your normal spod rod, uh, or even your fishing rod, tie a spawn on the end, and you can deposit dog biscuits as far out into the lake as you can cast. Well, we're getting the fish feeding out there now. And what I tend to find with loose feeding, when you're surface fishing, it's best to do little and often. So rather than chucking in loads and loads of uh, bait, which could just get caught in the wind and draw the fish elsewhere. It's best to trickle it in. This is because the fish are slowly eating that bait and if you're only putting a little bit in it at a time, they don't get a chance to follow this massive clump of bait off to another par part of the lake. That's particularly important when you've got other people fishing. You know, you're on somewhere busy like we are today. There's loads of people fishing up there. If I put in handful after handful of mixers and they get caught in the wind, they're just gonna take the fish up to another part of the lake. That can annoy other anglers uh, and it can annoy you because all your fish have gone. Um, so it's best a little bit at a time. And also on some places like where we are today, I think the noise of the mixers hitting the surface is drawing more fish up into the area. They are feeding quite confidently out there now. I find the trick with casting out your controller float is don't cast on top of where the fish are. Cast further than the fish. And then you can really, really slowly reel that float towards where the fish are. The problem with casting um, on top of them, right where the fish are, is you just scare them. The float hits the surface, the fish get scared, and your chance of catching is greatly reduced. Now I'll try and watch my hook bait, because if I can see it, if I can see the fish eat the hook bait, then I know when to strike. If you're fishing further out though, and you can't really see your hook bait, then the next best thing is to watch the float. As soon as the float starts pulling, uh, set the hook. I just want to eat the float these days. Oh no, oh no, I moved it. Damn, that was silly. That was silly. Why did I do that? <laughs> Yes, there we go. Oh, float just dragged along the surface and there's a fish on. Whoa. There we go. Beautiful scaly little dark mirror. Cool looking fish. Had um, quite a few bites today, surface fishing. Initially, stalking them is always my favorite way to go. Free lining, up close and personal, picking out the biggest fish you can see. Uh, but yeah, failing that, if the fish are out in the pond, using the uh, controller float, getting the mixers out there, getting them competing, can be, as you've seen, a really good, enjoyable way to catch carp. If you want to learn more about surface fishing or indeed zig fishing, check out one of these two videos on the screen right now. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon on the Fishing Tutorials channel.